got these kind of cymbal-like sounds. And those have the true filter settings. Let's check out some of the mics. Sounds kind of like a gong or a cymbal. Okay, so the percussion is a little bit different than all the other patches because we really wanted to experiment with how the sounds would change when we pitch them down with that built-in room ambience baked in. And you get some really cool results that are, are particularly useful for sound design and ambience and soundscape. So let's listen to it uh, as normal. Now let's play it an octave down. So the room's twice as big. Let's play it another octave down. So this stuff can be quite useful. It's not with any reverb on. Let's check out some of the other patches. There's a ton of percussion, so I'm not going to be able to get through it all, but we've got these kind of roll type things. Drum rolls. And just so you can hear it without the room. So the room's definitely adding a lot of size to that. That's so gonna be pretty cool. Let's check out some of these drums. The room. And now let's listen to how it sounds down pitched. Sometimes layering multiple pitches can be cool. Let's keep going. Just the DI. And. And pitch down. I don't know why, I just love those sounds. It's like a cool way to open up a track. Let's go back to the DI. And let's turn on the arpeggiator.
So we've got a ton of different kick sounds, but something I just want to illustrate is how the room can be really beneficial for your own uh, sound shaping when you get into doing your own kick design. So let's just take a listen to how, you know, the plain DI kick sounds. All right, now let's take a listen to how it sounds with close mics. Very, very different. Let's try the mid room. And rear surround. So let's take a listen to how these sound processed. So back to the DI. Okay, now the close. All right, very, very different. It's kind of like um, when you smash the overheads of a drum set. Let's try the mid rooms here. DI and close, so I've got that locked. Phase locked, I mean. Let's do DI and mid room. Let me, let me just show you something real quick. So here's how it sounds by default. Hear that flaming? Much better. That's where that really comes in handy with uh, all the percussive stuff. And also, if you just want the room mics to be uh, right on the beat without any delay, it's also helpful. Now both sounds are cool, but they're totally different, right? So one feature I haven't shown you guys yet is there's actually a round robin lock. So in certain instances, you want just one round robin. You know, if you want one kick sound that hits the bass a certain way every time, you want to just lock onto that. You can do that. See, totally different. And occasionally when you're cycling through, it doesn't do what you want. So if you want to have specific control over the round robin, you can do that. And that's a lot more useful than you'd think. Okay, let's take a look at some of the swells here. do without reverb and let's check out some of the room mics around yeah. 
So cool. Swell number one, I guess. No reverb. Midroom. Let's take a look at some of the effects. Turn off the spread. Room. Oh, so much better. Check out the harmonic swell. Check out some of the rooms, room mics. Here, how easy it is to just push it back in the mix. That one's interesting. Start losing the transients. time you get to the rear surrounds there's like no transients at all there's kind of like a wave nice helicopters Sub drops. We got a ton of sub drops. You'll never need another sub drop again after this, but let's just take a listen here. Each sub drop has multiple speeds. Let's check out some of the mics. there. 
Maybe we'll modulate the uh, low-pass filter too. 